How to write a good story. How to write a good story. Write Don't. a bad story. Yeah. Fix it. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> on your rock posted Stupid. that on, on his Instagram. <laughs> on your rock. That's so dumb. <laughs> It's not not true, though. <laughs> you don't know something's a, a bad story until you fix it, it. It is very true. That's how you learn to be good is by making mistakes. So if there is, that's 100% true. It's a bad story. Right. If you fixed it, but that's it's, no, it's no how longer. How do you fix it? it? But there's no longer a bad story if you right. fixed it. But you need to know how to fix it. That's the thing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid direction. It's on Corbin. I'm on your Agkashia. How dare you? <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, there Twitter, more juicy content. There we go. There Thanks he comes. Patreon, follow us, account, subscribe, yell, and like, bang! Bless his heart. My dad's... Yeah. My... my anyway. Ha! <laughs> uh, he's, he's horny right now. Yep. He's calling Rick. Constantly. Lot. He's always calling me when he's horny. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Today we're doing a movie review... And of the new film that just released, the 2022 film Kala or Kalo, if you're Bengali. No, that would be Kolo. Kolo, be, um, you're right. Prejudicially Sorry. racist uh, about the bongs. <laughs> so our, my wife, our my wife Bondu is, just... is in here, so I had to do it. Yes. <laughs> my my bo. Is that what it is? Bondu? Bondu, I'm, yes, I'm not, friend. Not, yes, not, but she's my bo. Not I'm our bo. My didn't wife. They, back in the day when you were younger, didn't they used to call them their bows? Your bow? Yeah. You need to land a bow? Yeah, no, yeah. As she, That's stupid. It's your bow, B-O-W. When you were a kid, right? Sure. Back before there was electricity or uh, the element of human thought. I, I, before we had evolved. I have an f- influencer f- friend. He posted, oh, do you? F- posted something on, on TikTok, and he said, my kid asked when I was born, I said 1987, and he asked me if I was a slave. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kids have no perception of time. No, it's true. <laughs> It's true. No, it's like I thought, a story. That, was, I thought it was Pastor, hilarious. Though. I know, but Pastor Jack Hayford talks about his uh, his his grandson talking to his mother when she was alive. So it was great grandma, and the he looked he looked at his mom's hand and he said, "Great grandma, what happened to your hand?" She said, "What?" He says, "It looks so old." She said, "Well, I am old. How old are you?" She was like, "She said I'm 92." He looks at her. He goes, "Did you start at one?" <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Anyways, well, we're doing a movie review of the, the new film, the Netflix film, Kala. Kala! And it's directed by Anvita Dutt. Also written by Anvita, Anvita Dutt. Dutt produced produced by, by Anushka Sharma. With a special thanks to yeah. Anushka Sharma for uh, contri- contributing. Composed by Amit Trivedi, uh, our ha- dose. Or, is he a yeah, do- is he's he a, a dose. I didn't know if he was Bengali. Um, and Isn't he? Or is, babe, Amit Trivedi Bengali, or is he... I no, I think he's yeah. So he's dusty. Okay, um, and it's the same, the same creators of uh, uh, Bulbul. Bul Bul. Also, the star of Bulbul Bul, Trip, Trip. Uh, I want to say Tripati, but it's not. No, it's Tripti. Tripti. Tripti Demri. Which is a cool name. I love that name. Yeah. Uh, and our Bondu uh, Shwoshika. Yes. Uh, as well, and um, our Dost. Abhishek as well makes a uh, indeed a, a appearance as well. Who also did was responsible for casting. Yes, uh, and a whole bunch of other people. So, yeah. if you haven't watched it, I, we're going to do a little non-spoilers because it is a new film. So yeah. we don't want to uh, spoil everybody. And then if we want to get into the spoils, we'll get into some spoils and we'll tell you before we do that. But it's on Netflix. It's less than two <clears> hours. You can go watch it uh, if you just want to watch it before you hear anything from us um but rick your initial thoughts please non-spoilers so this is our 71st of the year if you're keeping score at home our 278th all time our 42nd hindi of of 02 of 22 and our uh 171st hindi all time i have a paragraph oh boy this will tell you whether i liked it or not he had a paragraph for kgf2 though so that's true don't don't so don't no he didn't yeah no he did not i i (laughs) You drove if I, really. I, it's true. <laughs> if I, it, it's a whole adage. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, if yeah, I have yeah. a paragraph, I probably love the film. Um, that being said, uh, that being said, <laughs> <laughs> I hated the piano playing. So, <laughs> so Anvita Dutt 
proves herself to be a legitimate master of cinematic artistry as she has created a powerhouse work of collaborative craftsmanship comprised of profound cinematic subtleties and fragilities that silently scream through every frame of film about the never-ending plight all women living in the world still face of toxic male chauvinism, sexism, domination, and abuse, and how inexplicable and inexcusable it is that we still live in a world today that cares more about clinging to its dead sons than caring about its living daughters. I love, adore this film for a million reasons. Um, this is my favorite film of the year. Hands down. High five. Uh, <laughs> when I was done. I, I was going to say, I was going to say, we're going to have, as I finished it, I was walking in the kitchen thinking, we have to have a conversation about this in relationship to RRR because it doesn't this qualify, is, though. They're, they're two totally different and it, but worlds. But it doesn't qualify I, either. No, and it's it's two totally different worlds. But. And I would still recommend RRR even if it was qualified. Yeah, it's because of the effect that it's had on the Western. Exactly. It, it has an impact, but the importance level. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So I'm so happy and, to hear you say and that. And the artistic level on every so, single level. There's 45 a, minutes, you think, and this will be a 45-minute review? I don't know, man, because yeah. there's not one level that I didn't love. There's probably one frame that I was like, I could have probably done without as much computer generation behind it. Which one? Oh, wait, not yet. Because we're, we're in non-spoiler yeah, no, no, non mode. Non-spoiler, we can talk about um, that later. It, but it that, is. Like, if, that, if I'm thinking, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of something that I was like I don't love that uh, and that's like the only thing that can come pop into my mind uh, and I, is is one background frame was a little too CGI heavy for me once uh, <laughs> I don't know here's one of the things that's frustrating because I'm going to say the frustrating thing and then why it it's frustrating because it's the work is so beautiful on the credits on IMDB there's no credit for anybody involved with lighting None of the gaffers, none of the grips, none of the best boys are listed on the IMDb credits, which is mind-boggling. Same cinematographer, um, though, as uh, Bull Bull. Bull Bull, yeah. and it shows. Uh, but there's everything, guys. Literally every aspect. I can't think of another film that I have seen that has a perfect blending of every discipline of the art form, oh, from yeah. the lighting, the sound, the costuming, the art direction, the production design, the acting, the writing, the scoring, you name it. Even, even we'll get into it in the spoilers, but you're not going to find a film that demonstrates every single person in the collaborative team was at the top of their game than this movie. Yeah. It's as good as it gets. Yeah, and so let's get into this. Uh, first, let's talk about our star here, uh, because hot damn. Um, Indeed. Obviously, she we loved her in Bull Bull. She did a phenomenal job. We love Bull Bull. Did a great job. Love that movie. Uh, it's one of my favorite, probably Halloween horror Absolutely. films. Absolutely. Even though it's not, it's not like scary, I, but I don't think it was trying to be incredibly scary, scary. But it's it was a really fun uh, film. One of the most beautiful films yeah. you're ever going to watch, and which is why it's great that this director and cinematographer paired up again because yeah. we'll talk about that for hours. Yeah. Um, this performance, though, halfway through, I said to Steph, I said, I bet she was exhausted. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's an every interesting frame. Isn't it interesting to follow this right after Minoj? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it's a comparable difficulty. But like, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But like. She must have been every frame almost, and uh, it's not. I don't know if it's supported, but she's almost trembling, and it's it's unforgiving cinematography as far as yeah. how close they are to her, the close ups of her and what she's dealing it, with it, for the totality but, of the film. But it also looked real, and it looked like she was actually going through this, and it looked like she was. But for an actor to do that, you have to make yourself. Yes, and that is exhausting because I can, you you can make yourself tremble as an actor and all that kind of stuff, but to do it. For a two-hour film, so that's probably eight-hour shoot days. And yes, well, she must have been exhausted. To show you, this is a real challenge for actors. Uh, in my in my acting class yesterday, there's an actress that's in the class with me, and she asked Howard what to do when she's presented with this kind of a thing. She had an audition that required her to be extraordinarily emotionally connected and cathartic. And she had to do multiple takes for the self-tape, and she found herself by take five depleted and said, how, how do I maintain that? Because I know I not have to do it just for my self-tapes. I have to do that when I'm on set. 
if they require multiple takes, especially if I have to do a role where I'm that way for the majority of the film. But even though let's just say it's a single scene, mm-hmm. it's a requiring thing that only a trained actor can accomplish. Yeah. And she's she and was magnificent. She, I love magnificent. Her, her entire performance was Agreed. just a thing of beauty. It, it's definitely going to be in the dummies this year, and it, it, she in, could very well win it by the. There have been a lot of great performances by women this year, so it's going to be. I'm going to have to go look at it and me see. Me too. But I, if she won, I could very well make an argument for the fact that she was the best performance of the year. This no, this, she was a phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. performance on every level. Her emotion availability, the 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 her power on screen at times, her just everything about it, I I adored and I loved. I agree. And I think. I'm, she's just starting her career. I know. It's so exciting. And she is going to be a absolute taboo-level powerhouse, I feel, if she continues on her trajectory. She has a capacity about her, and I would love to know, as always, just stuff about her process. Um, and But without any spoilers, we already shared enough about there's a fragility to the character. Um, and then we'll get into spoilers here in a second. But there's, there is not just a fragility to what she's going through. It's interesting because she has a fragility, but she also has a strength. And I felt that she, the actress, was doing what all great actors do, sharing the truth about herself and seeing who she was in this character, that she and the character were inseparable. It is what would Tripti do? Who would Tripti be if she was in these places? And I, I just, I felt the level of personal work that is as, as guys, it's as good as it gets. As was not a, not a surprise. Schwostika. Yeah. What do you think about Schwostika? She's always great. Yeah. And it, it Again, she didn't. She didn't have to go through the kinds of things, obviously, because she's supporting. But when do you want to get into spoilers? Because con- conversing about Swastika yeah, yeah, okay. requires me to talk just, about some spoilers. Just know if there's an element of this film we loved it. Just, Every aspect. Just name an element of the film, and we loved it. I love. There's not. There's not a outside of getting into a spoiler of a certain scene. One thing that I really disliked about this film, I gave it five stars on my letterbox. Uh, it's it's a absolute gem of a film. Go watch this film. That's all. Yeah, it, it, that's it, that's the non spoiler review. And for you. you can watch. I'm not kidding. You could watch this film Unless five you times. Just like action films. Yeah. If you're not a lover of the art form, <laughs> go go watch something else. You could watch this movie five times in a row, just for the acting, just for the directing, cinematography, just for the cinematography. Yeah. Just for the score, costuming, score. just for the score, just for the lighting, which goes hand in hand with the cinematography, just for the art direction. You, there is so much, and they're all, look at, if you haven't seen it, look at how interwoven every single discipline that I just named off tells the same story in the most perfect, delicate, delightful, it's, it's, a, it's a true beauty to behold. Yeah, absolutely. So... Go watch it. It's on Netflix. It's yeah. under two hours. Go spoiler watch time. Uh, spoiler, 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 spoiler. If you're still here, there's... Yeah, crazy. if you're still here, then you've seen the movie. Uh, I texted Schwoshtika after it, uh, we were done, and I said, I one, obviously, phenomenal job. I love the film. And I said, I hated you so much. Great job. <laughs> and that is... If I had, like, um, in Harry Potter, if I had um, Umbridge's phone number, right, I would text her right after. You were one of the most characters i've hated more in my entire life you did a phenomenal job because i've never actually that's probably the film that i've seen i've hated a character so much in umbridge more than vol i, I like <laughs> i would rather Voldemort more than joffrey win, more oh yeah more than joffrey really easily wow i despise umbridge in harry potter not the actress because this is no, how good of a job yeah. she did because she had to do that good of a job and i said i so i was like i hated you because like she mother of the year I, right mother of the year yeah <laughs> It's interesting. My my feeling for her was more along the lines, and I don't know how many people feel this way about the character I'm about to reference. I felt the same way about Swastika's portrayal of the mom. The, I feel the same way about that mom that I do about Daniel Plainview mm. in There Will Be Blood. He's a despicable person. No, she was worse. He's a despicable person. 
but my heart breaks for him. And and even before we reach the climax Your of the heart film, broke for her. Yep. I actually I actually was upset I, once again spoilers. I was upset that she came in and started crying in the end. No, I was like, I, you do not deserve these tears. They they you ass. They're both victims of the exact same system who had completely different outcomes. I agree with you. Yeah. That they are but I don't believe she deserved any no. any remorse in the end for what she did. Oh, I did. I do not. Uh, the reason I, I don't forgive as easy as you do. I, I, think. I know. I know. <laughs> I do not forgive for and the fact that this started with a, a twin story, which if you don't know, I just had twins this year, a boy and a girl. Uh, shocker! I love them both equally. <laughs> what I'm not really? I know. Wow, crazy. Uh, <laughs> but um, and so like it started, and I was like, oh no. Yeah. I really hope this isn't like. So awful um, in terms of like, because obviously it started once again. Spoilers: the one of the twins dying and, right. and all that kind of stuff, and and of course the boy and, and the boy. Um, but it, they did a they did a really good job. But yeah, I d- I despised her character because she was just so awful, and she just every everything about the the opposite of the mother of the year is her, um, the worst mother in the world I can think of. Um, and the fact that she's so prejudiced ag- against a woman, even though she's a woman, she should be supporting like the other women did in this film. Mm. But she was like, no, you stole my son from me. And she blamed it on her. So I believe she gets no, no arc for remorse in this. <laughs> Absolutely none. Great job, Shorshika. I, Your character's amazing. It's beautifully written. The oh, fact, yeah. The fact that the mom does reach a place of remorse, which there is a point... I don't know what point it was, but it's as we enter the final act of the film, I wrote down in my notes that I wrote, I wrote, Kala has to die. If we're going to take this to where it's going, and I believe our, our director and writer is taking it, that I knew Kala was going to die. She had to die. Because, and, and it, I thought also maybe the mom would die because they're in some respects two sides of a similar coin. Mm-hmm. But, I, I'm kind of glad that she didn't. And and just as a, a little sideways, since we're on Schwostika's mom character, one of the things that's so beautiful about the costuming in this is, I don't know if you picked up on this, you probably did, you'll notice that there's a fragility and a delicacy to the costuming on Kala. It's, it's mostly light colors and whites, and her saris have midriff showing and a lot of see-through things that convey a fragility and a fabric nature that's light and not as grounded and as she's far more transparent and she's also more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Whereas, sure she and and she's also, she also, she also matches the snow, which, which is, well, which there is was even a yin yang moment with the, with, yes. Uh, Swastika's mom is always darker mm-hmm. and solids. Well, the, the one in the snow was, um, uh, your son. Yeah. Uh, that guy. Yeah. But, but later on she's in full black at the mm-hmm. at the funeral, yeah, which is an interesting thing when yeah, you think yeah, about yeah, Indian yeah. culture. Mm-hmm. But all of the mom's costuming was solids; yep. they were not see through. They were darks, yes. and the women around Kala were lighter textured. All of her advocates, who were silent but clearly empathizing with her, were incomparable kinds of fabrics, and that's the kind of marrying. And then the sound. There's a moment where the camera's coming down. And it reveals at the bottom of the frame microphone. And in the sound, far away, you just hear a slight feedback like the sound of a microphone when it's turned on. Mm -hmm. That attention to detail by everybody involved in this mesmerized me. absolutely. Every frame. I want to talk about um, Babil Khan, the late great Irfan Khan's son as Mm. well. This is, I believe, his first. Is it really? I think so. Is this his first? Um, I think it's like first... Let's double check here. This is him, right? I'm not crazy, right? It's Babil Khan, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It's his first thing ever that he's done. Yeah. Nepotism. Uh, yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh. I mean, but. Come on. One first. First thing, I think he did a, a fantastic job. Agreed. Um, you, there's, you would expect so much, so much worse of a performance from somebody who's never acted in it, but. <laughs> I don't know how he couldn't have learned or just have natural gifting being who his father is. Yeah. But even still, obviously, there are actors who have amazing parents, actors that yeah. they have absolutely no talent at all. It's True. not just 
it's not just something that's genetically passed off. No, um, and even with the genetic pass off, you do still typically have to understand technique. It's it's talent and technique. Yeah, I would love to speak to him about what he learned from his father. Absolutely. Uh, and how much, if he wanted to at all, or if it was later in life that he sure. decided. Because sometimes when your parent is one thing, you want to kind of do the opposite because you don't want to kind of invade their space. But I thought he did a really good job. I did too. Uh, he had, I thought his motion reality was really, really good. Yep. He looks so much like young Irfan. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely crazy, right? Um, but I thought he brought a, a, a really good dynamic with uh, tri uh, Tripti, right? Is it yes. How you say her name? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought their dynamic was really nice. Mm -hmm. Um and and everything like that. What do you think about his? Voice? Oh, I I agreed. Uh, he clearly, whether he learned it by observation or from direct interaction or from other people telling him, he clearly understands the simplicity of Being smallness silent. and yeah. silent and stillness. That um, acting is not about performing; it's about being present and in the moment. Um, I felt one of his best and most beautiful moments, which was framed so wonderfully, was him sitting across from her um, and the, he had mom moments of framed shots with the tear that did not seem contrived. It just seemed like a captured moment that was natural. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. Great job. Uh, let's talk about um, so many aspects. Cinematography, because the cinematographer, um, and the say the say his name for lighting me. team. You yes. deserve the credit. You yeah. should be referenced on IMDb. Every grip, every gaffer, every best boy. Anyway, um, yes, cinematography was headed because there were other. Obviously, with all cinematographies, there's teams. Um, you have people who are assistant cinematographers. You have people who are grips, and their sole job is to help the cinematographer. But our primary DOP is Siddharth Dewan. And uh, if I've mispronounced that, forgive me. The same team uh, with the director yes. uh, uh, that did Bull Bull, which we loved, mm -hmm. the cinematography of Bull Bull. And this was just as beautiful, very different. Very not different. As, not as vibrant. Uh, Didn't need to be. But still vibrantly dull. Uh, it's one of those kind of things. Yes. Um, well said. But... And what they did with not only obviously the cinematographer, but the visuals in this film, because most of this film was grounded, right, in in terms of like in reality. Yes. But they did certain things at certain moments that was very Black Swan. Yes, that's or, exactly what I thought or, watching it. Or The Shining. Uh, like very when, Black the Swan. The blood comes down the the hallway. It was yes. Of, it was, and all and even of, even hints of a beautiful mind. Yeah. So like certain things would happen that aren't actually happening in reality, but they're visual representations. Yes. Of certain the snow coming down, the 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 raven, the obviously the 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 mercury, all that kind of stuff. So there's so many different things. The moth uh, that that they did visually that I love, like the snow, all the snow at the end. Right? Gorgeous. Uh, in the recording such studio, a, yeah, such yeah. a beautiful representation um, of something not actually happening in reality, but still, your film is very grounded uh, in, right. in, in reality, like Black Swan. But obviously, something that's just going on in her mind, yes, just using a visual representation, which yes. I feel like is a lost art form. Art form now, it doesn't happen a lot. Uh, we saw it once, obviously, with uh, Sachin Rai in Hero. He did it a lot. There were moments this reminded uh, me of Rai in in Hero, and. I think so. Whoever was the cinematographer, was the director, whoever come up with that aspect of the cinematography and the visuals, I thought was brilliant. Because yeah. I that ultimately I, I, falls on, on on your director. That's the, on Miss Dutt. The originality of it and the creativity of yes. it was amazing. Yes, which for me was clearly a woman's hand and perspective throughout the totality of the writing and everything from the symbolism of the snowflakes again the white which many of the women were in the white which i wrote down had represented white pure indiv individualized yet at the same time immensely fragile and easy to not appreciate for what it is um she's uh, our, our the star in the name of the film of kala that she's she's every woman i wrote this down at the point i realized that i went Okay, I get it. Kala is every woman, mm -hmm. and because of that, she must die when this movie ends. Mm -hmm. I would have been very angry if she doesn't die when the movie ends, um, because uh, it, it was very clear throughout, like, one of the most heartbreaking moments is when she walks out there dressed scantily, and she has the stuff to smoke, and she's trying to replicate what she saw her mom do. Because that is what she thinks is the only way she's going to achieve anything and she's ever going to get the approval she needs so badly from her mom. 
And there are so, so many women for ages who have been put in those positions where they don't know what else to do. And they have been put in those positions that they either offer it or it's been forced upon them. Yeah. And they end up devastated. Yeah. And and it was heartbreaking to watch her. And the, just the way she held her face up so not, Swostika did it with this experienced amorous and sexuality that she's done this a lot. Mm hmm. And she did it the way of like this virginal girl mm -hmm. who it's so awkward and you just want to run up and go, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and obviously that's the whole one of the big messages of the film, obviously, about women and yeah. uh, especially in the industry, uh, music, film, whatever, whatever. Obviously, it's the same, I think, of probably around the world because mm -hmm. it's not just even in the film industry, but obviously that's what this was. Any industry that it's, has power. Yeah. Anytime you have people that are trying to come up and you have people in power, especially if it's a man, you're going to, uh, obviously, the Me Too movement and, and all that kind of stuff of, of, of exposing um, awful, awful men or people in general, because it's not obviously just women, but it's just predominantly women. Yeah. Brendan Fraser is a, a very famous um, um, yes, man who, if you didn't who know that. got taken advantage of by pr a big producer uh, in Hollywood. Yep. Um, and so... I, that messaging behind it was great. I like the fact that they went there. Yes. Um, with certain scenes in terms of like when she, uh, when it first happened on the the balcony when she thought she was getting fired and then it showed her basically giving him a blowjob. What I, what I love about that is first of all, when it starts to pan, it looks like he might be masturbating, mm -hmm. and that's what I thought at first. I'm like, that's kind of weird. And it goes right around the gargoyle. Mm -hmm. Gargoyles are big in this symbolism. Thing. Yeah. And then we come back to it from the other angle, and she's standing coming up, up yep. standing up. And she did such a great job of honestly wiping her lips yeah. in the moment because she herself was disgusted at what took place. Trying to wipe it off. Rather than an inexperienced actor would stand up and wipe it to show you what I've done, which kills the moment because it's no longer believable because yeah. the action was driven from a place of showing rather than the inward thing going on with this girl of, I have just... It was beautiful. Yeah, absolutely amazing. That's actually the scene that um, I had a problem with. Not the scene itself. The background of the the, the balcony that they were on mm. was a little too CGI heavy for me. Wow, I, I was yeah. so <laughs> captivated yeah. with the shot, I didn't even notice. It's like, like I said, the only yeah. thing in the entire I didn't film even notice. that I saw that I was like, mm. Yeah. It's a little too, as, as everything else was like, even if, if it was CGI, it was just beautiful cinematography and gorgeous. Yeah, I didn't even that pick up on that. That seemed a little too CGI for me, and it distracted me from what was going on over here, even though what was going on over here was amazing and beautiful. And, well, uh, not beautiful, but the performance was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that's like the only crap I have of the entire film was the background of that scene. Uh, I thought the score in this was also... Incredible. Um, beautiful, um, very fitting. Um, it was subtle a lot. At times, but then obviously the, the big numbers as well when they actually performed uh, were so. Uh, oh, the our, singing, our, the voices. Our dosed in this, Amit Trivedi, just a brilliant, brilliant composer. I thought did a brilliant job with the score in this film. I, I agree. And once again, just as, for example, we have um, lighting telling the story and that the warm tones when she's in the house with her mom or any house warm tones are always away from her they're always a warm tone is outside the window and it's cold in where she is as far as the lighting then we talked about the costuming representing certain things sound design speaking to you representatively scoring as well there was a point I could go back and listen to it again and make sure of this but it sounded like he had he had committed two different string instruments to be thematically connected to Swastika's mom and to Kala because whenever Kala had something she was going on there was a singular cello sound that was happening and then there were when there was a point where she was reaching that pinnacle of conflict there was this this dis, it wasn't even dissonant as much as it was this slight duoing of different strings and they became representative of the characters as well as just moments where they filled in moments of silence just freaking perfect yeah and i'm trying to think about anything else the editing by manas manas Fla uh, yeah flawless and I, everything it felt no like a seamless 
whole. Mm-hmm. If it, I felt like it almost feels in the editing like they said action and all we got was a live shot of go to camera one, go to camera two, go to camera three. I didn't feel the editing. Yeah. Ever. It was great. Um, so basically, I guess all uh, shout out to Av- Av- Avin. Uh, say your name. Uh, oh, to, uh, to uh, Anvita Dutt, the uh, creator. The creator. And the team. Writer, director, um, because uh, she's becoming a, a, a fantastic uh, Incredible. director uh, with Bull Bull and now, now this. And what other... I, I haven't. I, I would love to know. She's new too. Oh yeah, she's a lyricist. Oh yeah, she's a lyricist. Oh no, first. no, yes, yes. She's, the music is in in the in the, the background prior to coming to the direction of film. The, no, no, she's two films in a row that she's obviously keeping. Oh, she's uh, visuals as as one of her main methods of telling parts of the story, which is lost, I feel, on a lot of people. Um, and she's done it brilliantly. I, very different than, obviously, Sanjay Lee Bansali, but equally as beautiful, I feel, at times. I, um, I meant that in the, the opening paragraph when I said that Anvita Dutt proves herself to be a legitimate master of cinematic artistry. Yeah, she's absolutely brilliant. And I want to thank Anushka Sharma. I think she is probably one of the better producers in all of India, Hindi cinema. Uh, well, if she does other languages, I, I don't know. But um, I... The things that she's chosen to produce, yes, is is I think great because she's choosing to produce good quality content. Yes, um, and so I, I want to applaud her because we don't often get to talk about because you never know what actual producer does. Often, it can be very many different things. They could just be money uh, money bank, uh, which is. A lot of times what you hopefully want them to be because you want them to support the artists that are actually doing it, the directors, the actors, the writers. You right. To support them and be there if they need any information. But mainly just being there to support and put money towards and promote and putting their weight behind their product. Yes. Essentially. Yes. And the stuff that she's decided to produce that we've seen, which was also Bull Bull, Patal Lock, um, NH10, we've seen quite a few things that she's produced. I think she's quickly becoming one of the better producers in all of India, on top of obviously she's a very give, talented actress. Give her as much money as she needs to disseminate that to Anvita and directors like her with creative teams like this, because these are the kind of films that are the most important films to be made. Because they are at the highest levels of expression of the art form in every discipline that's involved, telling stories that have a level of importance that don't just engage you as an audience member, but cause you to talk about things topically that if they're done amongst people with intelligence result in you finding a place where you can have a better world. Because the outcome of a film like this shouldn't just be the conversation this was a great movie, the outcome of a film like this should then evolve into the conversation of the subject matter is about women, about mental health, because that is another, they even say at the very end, if you're having a mental health issue, you should go ahead and contact here. And that's a subject we didn't even delve into. That's a big part of the story. But as it pertains to the way uh, women should be treated, the way women have been treated, the things that need to be changed in order for women to be treated with equal value from birth to death uh, and in all forms of society, the movie making is just doesn't get any better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So please, if you're still here, I know this was probably a long one. I apologize. I predicted 45 Uh, minutes. (laughs) Let us know what you thought about this film and what should be the next film we should watch down below.